it's me. And that's my cat, Abraham. So it actually happened. Despite what my prior thoughts were that I expressed in my earlier videos, Shane Dawson actually came back and posted on his main channel, which I did not think was going to happen anytime soon. So today, I want to summarize what Shane said in his video, talk about how the internet is responding to his return, and just give some extra thoughts at the end. But first, as always, I would like to invite any fellow artists out there to grab a sketchbook or something else fun and relaxing to do if you feel like being creative with me while I draw this caricature portrait of Shane Dawson. Feel free to follow me on Instagram or Twitter and share what you made with me. And I also have a subreddit, r slash paint and sip yt, where you can post art, you can post YouTube drama, you can post whatever you want. It's just a fun place. And if you're new here, this is a chill place for artists or anyone interested in internet topics to hang out and relax and have respectful commentary and conversations about whatever it is that the topic of the video is. So if you're into that, I hope you'll stay and subscribe. And if not, I'm glad you're here right now just hanging out and listening anyway. Now let's get into it. Before yesterday, as of the day I am recording this, Shane's last upload to his main channel was more than a year ago, which was his apology video. But he has been slowly, over time, becoming more and more comfortable with being online, with regular Instagram stories. He started with off-camera cameos on Ryland's vlog channel and eventually started appearing on Ryland's main channel, Ryland's podcast, and now recently Shane even made an appearance on Jeffree Star's channel. So in Shane's comeback video from yesterday, it's very, very vlog style, at least in the beginning. It's kind of like a vloggy house tour life update video to start, and then it leads into Shane sitting down, getting serious, and once again addressing his cancellation and explained his current stance on everything which I will summarize shortly. This then leads into what Shane's first series is actually about, ghosts and hauntings and paranormal and his desire to make horror films. And the reaction on YouTube has been overwhelmingly positive and even some drama and commentary channels seem to be lightening up on Shane a bit. Twitter, for once as well, is starting to shift a bit, just a bit. But for the first time in like a year, we are seeing more and more Twitter users expressing how they actually miss Shane and are glad that he is back, which is not to erase the people out there still committed to their personal beliefs and morals about Shane not deserving a platform at all, no matter what he says and does because of the horrible offensive content he put out beforehand. But yeah, drama and commentary channels at this point are starting to kind of shift their opinions. A lot of people are still keeping the same thoughts that they had beforehand, but there's opinions really all across the spectrum at this point. Trisha Paytas has even responded, saying that she believes people deserve second and third chances when she was answering a question in reference to Shane and his comeback video. I just, it just blows my mind that so many people are so accepting of Shane just coming back, being the same person. He didn't change. If you watch the video, he didn't change. Shane being back now, the only thing that we can hope is that the last year, two years, has taught him to be more careful with his platform what content he makes, and what content is actively on his profile. Because it only took the cancellation for him to delete so many of the problematic, offensive, and downright disgusting content. He still has something to offer the platform, even if the past it wasn't so great. I'm, I'm not ready to forgive or forget yet. I, I really, all in all, my opinions and takeaways from this were, I think that Shane really did take time to think about what he's put on uh, YouTube over the past, what, like 12, 13 years. I think that he had a lot of time to process that. I think everyone makes mistakes. I think everyone deserves to be forgiven. I feel like, you know, everyone deserves second, third chances. And it's like, you, like as a public figure, do you have to give that? No, if you don't like him, you don't like him. But, you know, I he has something that is just very charming and magnetic and people like him. And I think, again, I think like, no, who wants to put anyone in a dark place? Again, if you don't want to support him, I totally understand that. 
So before giving the quick summary of Shane addressing his scandal, I have a huge question. What is the reason why public reaction changed so quickly from people saying, no, cancel him, take away everything, he deserves to go to prison, etc., to people either saying they don't know what to think, they're not ready to forgive him yet, but maybe in the future they're willing to wait it out and see what happens, to even people saying, yes, I'm ready, I missed him, etc. So what's the reason for the drastic change from one radical end of the spectrum to the other? And what opinion do you hold, if you've watched the video, that is? So after the vloggy house tour intro of the video, Shane gets into it about his cancellation. He says he feels very disconnected from the version of himself who made those jokes, short films, bad decisions, etc., and says that when he sees that person, it makes him sick to his stomach. He talks about that through therapy, he has learned and accepted that that person is him and he cannot pretend that part of him doesn't exist because it does and he is that person and he has accepted and come to peace with that realization. He then explains that he has learned from his past and believes that he has become a better person and would never make those jokes or participate in that behavior ever again. He then mentions how other people in his life were afraid for their careers because of Shane's cancellation, which this part right here is pure speculation, but I think that is probably his way of addressing his relationships with Andrew and Garrett, who seemingly ended their friendships with Shane during his cancellation. So Shane then goes on to say that he's grateful for his cancellation because his life has changed for the better, and now he is truly happy after taking a step back from YouTube and the pressures that came from needing to post it all the time and come up with new ideas and all of that. He said that his old content had jokes in them that he wouldn't make today, but they got him where he is today and they had good messages that resonated with people, so he doesn't want to fully throw them away. He addresses directly the people who are still upset with him and says if they don't want him around, he understands. And then he says after this, he doesn't want to keep talking about it because he said he's not going to run from his past, but he's also not going to stay in it and he's not going to live in there because he has come to terms with it and it would be unhealthy to constantly soak in it. He said he left because he felt like he should and because he needed time to figure himself out, but he never planned on quitting and never plans on quitting and is grateful to have the chance to do more things in his life and he's so excited. So that's the summary of Shane addressing his cancellation and it has been very well received as I said, especially on YouTube, but Twitter is seemingly split and Reddit is not buying any of it. <laughs> and my daughter is is having a conversation in the background. <laughs> I do really want to spotlight this comment though because this is the huge problem with all of this. Someone commented saying, it's been so long since you've uploaded, I forgot what you were canceled for. And that is not good. That is not something to talk about in a positive light. As I said earlier, my channel is a place for good energy and positive, respectful atmosphere, which it is. But everything can't always be strictly positive either because that's also unhealthy. So even though we keep it light, relatively family friendly and very respectful, it's still important to call out dangerous ideas and thoughts as it relates to the topics that we talk about, right? So if you are going to be somebody who is going to choose to forgive Shane Dawson, do not forget. Know what you're forgiving Shane for. If you're someone who was affected and if you are someone who the apology is meant for, remember what happened. Keep the history fresh in your mind when you are making decisions about your opinions because that's how you form informed opinions that really reflect your morals and beliefs. Remember the past. Know the past before casting judgment calls. And it is possible for someone who knows the past and remembers the past to believe Shane has changed. And if you are in that boat, I think it's a safe call to tread lightly, but also don't push your beliefs on people who can't accept Shane's apology. If you are not offended by what he did, others are, and their feelings are just as valid as yours. Be kind and respectful to everyone, respect people's opinions, and let's try not to spread any more hurt or hatred. I think at this point, now that Shane is 
fully back. People's minds are pretty much made up and people are being brutally honest about how they feel. I think there's a lot of people who are still weary and they're waiting to decide how they feel. But most people either hate Shane or they love him at this point. And I think that's how it's going to be from here on out. What do you think? And how do you feel? Some issues that people still have about this video is that Shane didn't explicitly explain what he did wrong. Like, for example, how Jenna Marbles did in her apology video. And people think that doing that makes for a more genuine apology. And other people think that he really needed to address the beauty guru drama involving Tati and James Charles, as Shane did roll his eyes at Tati's SA and contributed to James Charles's cancellation, how Tati said that Shane and Jeffrey manipulated her into making an expose video about James Charles, etc. Because that whole thing was really the catalyst that triggered people to dig up Shane's past and remind everybody about what he did. So with that, if you made some artwork with me, as always, I would love to see it by tagging me on Instagram or Twitter at Paint and Sip YT or by posting it on my subreddit r slash Paint and Sip YT. And also remember to subscribe, follow my socials, and maybe check out my Patreon or Etsy shop if you're if you would like to support my artwork even further. And with that, I hate outros, so <laughs> okay bye.